in this series of They Think It's All Over and with Gary currently leading the series 4-3 the big question is can Jonathan and David's expert sporting knowledge win the day or will we just have to cheat it? <laughs> with David and Jonathan is one of the finest sprinters of all time who built his career on the unique method of never breathing or blinking during a race it won him gold in the 100 metres at the Olympics although it was a disaster at the London Marathon Linford <laughs> Christie With Gary and Rory is an Australian comedian who admits that he was once videoed having sex, and since then he's been banned for life from Dixon's. <laughs> Mark Nicholl. <laughs> now we get things moving with the excuses round. David, Jonathan and Linford, it's the Olympic Games for you, and here's Britain's favourite 9.96 seconds of Olympic history. This time they go a little bit unsteady. Christie got a good one. Also going well, it's Dennis Mitchell. And it's Dennis Mitchell and Fredericks. And Christie comes storming through. It's Linford Christie. And the British captain is the Olympic champion. The greatest prize in sport. Right, from now on, we can take the piss, OK? <laughs> Now, that was Linford winning gold at Barcelona in 1992, but since then, the reputation of the Olympics has been tarnished by scandal. Many of the delegates who voted for Sydney to host the Olympics and for Salt Lake City to hold the Winter Olympics have admitted to taking bribes and gifts. It's now been established that Salt Lake City only got the vote after paying one African delegate, Jean-Claude Ganja, for his wife to have plastic surgery and for his mother-in-law to have new knees. <laughs> so, what reason did he give? for accepting these gifts. Yes. New knees for his mother-in-law. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a fair swap. <laughs> I thought bribery was normal. <laughs> <laughs> so he's got knees for the mother-in-law and plastic surgery for his wife. Mm -hmm. Is that because he's married to Daniela Westbrook? <laughs> <laughs> what? I tell you, the saddest thing, to be quite serious for a moment, Nobody the saddest knows. thing about what that poor young girl has done to herself is not so much that it spoiled her looks for her acting career, but she also had a very promising follow-up career with the nose flute. And that's gone as well. <laughs> that's just... She can't... I mean, maybe the oboe now. I don't know. <laughs> but I'll be honest with you, I'd still f*** that. And I'll tell you... <laughs> because... You know, up the nose! <laughs> I'll tell you, you'd dip your old man in coke, she'd have it up there before you could stop her. <laughs> I'm only saying what you've been thinking. <laughs> Sydney. Sydney has weather, great sporting facilities, and a real desire for sport. It's full of Aussies, though. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but if we didn't have Bung, Manchester would have got it. No, but I'll say that. <laughs> Why is it on this show we always dwell on the dark side of sport? Why is it we always look at the, the bad things, the bribery, the corruption, the spooky resemblance that Colin Montgomery has for Mrs Doubtfire? <laughs> Why don't we accentuate the positive on this program? That's what I'd like to see. Why don't we look at the, the masters of the sport? Why don't we look at the, the wonderful sporting achievements of the last few weeks? For example, England footballers taking on the marvellous Maltesers. <laughs> the England cricket team beating the well-prepared and focused Zimbabweans. And beating them like <laughs> Tim Henman getting through to the third round. That's right, the third round of the French Open before getting knocked out by some bloke we've never heard of. <laughs> Every week I sit next to some of the best athletes in this country, Linford. You're a top athlete in your prime. David, you always tried hard. <laughs> <laughs> and every week, we make them endure these insults. Is he just the fellow who said, yeah, it's the done thing? I mean, he just accepted it because he knew no other? Yeah, go on, three points. Oh. <laughs> 
John Claude Gandhi's excuse was that Africa needs all the money it can get, however it gets it. Before resigning, he said, Africa is a poor continent. When people offer money and gifts for African sport, should I not accept? Ganja also tried to explain his acceptance of a $30,000 cash gift by saying that the banking system in the Congo was too unreliable to pay his wages properly. Well, ever since they closed the smaller branches of Barclays, he's had to walk to Zambia to get a cash gift. <laughs> The head of the Sydney Olympics bid had to resign after compiling a dossier of the kind of presents delegates like. Mohamed Zaghini of Algeria was marked down for Grand Prix tickets. Flor Fonseca of Venezuela was said to like young men, while Britain's Princess Anne was put down for three sugar lumps and a bag of winter hay. <laughs> Gary, Roy and Mark, it's motor racing for you. This season, the Jaguar racing team made their long-awaited debut in Formula One and have stormed their way to second bottom, just above Arrows. But at the start of the season, Jaguar had to abandon their plan to paint Eddie Irvine and Johnny Herbert's cars in traditional Jaguar racing green. Why? Linford, can I ask you, apparently when you train, you drag around a £50 rubber tyre, is that right? Well, it's only because I can't afford the rest of the car. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've been dragging around a £50 tyre for years, it's done me no good at all. <laughs> That's got an official title, that green, hasn't it? Anne Whittacombe's Teeth. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually quite scientific, plus I they, um... <laughs> Do we just show it? <laughs> <laughs> you <all> right, Linford? <laughs> <laughs> that goes my knighthood, you know? <laughs> I think that was some time ago. <laughs> It's actually, actually quite scientific because the original racing green, the dark green, yeah. um, under racing conditions was said to be too heavy. Mm. Mm. So they had to go for a lighter green. Let, let, let's face oh, it. I just noticed a problem no, with light. Come on, he's good in neighbours. Well, let's face it, green. <laughs> green is just a crap colour, isn't it, well, Jonathan? It's just a cat colour. <laughs> I'm going to give you the three points for what Mark said about that, the weight. Well done, three points. <laughs> Thanks very much. According to the papers, the reason the Jaguar Racing Green couldn't be used was because the paint was too heavy and would slow down the car. However, Jaguar have since denied this, so here's Johnny Herbert with the official reason. Uh, I think the best rumour I heard was when the, the car was sprayed British Racing Green, the paint was too uh, heavy. But uh, the fact is that we, we sprayed the car, went round a track, filmed it, uh, and then when we did the playback, it was actually in black. So now we have the colour we have today. So, Jaguar Racing Green looks black on TV. It's the same sort of optical illusion that makes Jaguar cars look as if they're standing still compared to the other teams. <laughs> Jaguar grew out of a pre-war company called Swallow Sidecars, which sold their product for £175. Or, for £185, you could enjoy a deluxe swallow. Rory's grandfather spent 10,000 quid before he realised his mistake. <laughs> Now, for a bonus point, only for David and Gary, first one to shout in, OK? Huh? Huh? How do you account for this behaviour? Come on, come on. Come on, Darren, come on. Come on, Darren. Come on, Darren, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on. 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 Come on, he was cheering on Darren Campbell, one of his guys. Yeah. Bonus point. Yeah. And at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have four. Next up is Sing When You're Winning, where we play the start of a terrace song and the teams have to guess what line comes next. Gary's team, it's rugby league for you. Your chant comes from the fans of St Helens. Oh, I've heard of St Helens and seen on TV The dog is the coal mines and lots more to see So why go to Wigan when you can come here? So why go to Wigan when you can come here and watch David Beckham take posh up the rear? <laughs> So why go to Wigan when you can come here? Jonathan Ross has verbal diarrhoea.
What's that? This, even by your standards, the new advert is pretty piss poor, I guess, isn't it? <laughs> No, being serious, it's a, I think it's unfortunate for you what they're forced to do it because they've taken. I don't know if you've seen it. Well, it took me three weeks they've to build that body. They've taken. They've superimposed the image there, and they've put some jagged twat's face on your body. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's wrong. I think you want to get an agent. The time is now. Mm. Why go to Wigan when you, you can, can come, come here. here? Can you ask Mark Little if Jason Donovan's queer? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the last bloke to ask. Really? Yeah, well. Well, were well, you the last bloke he had? Why go to Wigan when you can come here, unless you're a hamster and prefer Richard Gear? That's it. That's it, they are, yeah. I have no idea. Well, this is how it goes on. So why go to Wigan when you can come here to watch Tommy Martin and drink Green Hall's beer? St Helens and Hull are now the only two rugby league teams to hold out against unofficial nickname like Broncos or Rhinos. Even this programme has succumbed to the fashion. Henceforth, our teams will be known as the Gower Pumas and the Linica Cheetahs. <laughs> in the 1950s, the government actually tested chemical weapons on Mullock Heath in St Helens. The resulting explosion caused millions of pounds worth of improvements. <laughs> The World Bank recently announced that St Helens was amongst the five worst towns in Europe, which is an extremely dangerous state of affairs. If they finish in the bottom three, they'll be relegated to Asia. <laughs> David's team, it's Rugby Union for you, and a song from Clanethley. Here's the town's male voice choir to sing Sospan Fach. Sospan Bach, and then we are at all. Sospan Bach, and then we are at all. Our God, where he scrambled, Johnny Bach. Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? Can you hear me, Major Tom? <laughs> Let's see, a um, little saucepan boiling on the fire, big saucepan boiling on the floor, the cat has scrammed little Johnny. That's illegal, isn't it? Yeah. Apart from in Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Is this from the Delia Smith Magic Mushroom Recipe Book? <laughs> Do you think after it came out, Safeway's completely sold out of Little Johnny's? <laughs> They're Welsh, aren't they? <laughs> and he goes, Die Bucking Soldier, Die Bucking Soldier, Clantisillo mobile phone, Go, 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 compact display, Lanfa, <laughs> Internet browser, Piff Wingy, Kinaton widescreen, Langilo. <laughs> So is it true that you always used to go on the first B in bang? That's why I've heard a quote from you saying that. You used to no, go I can go on for longer than that. You said, no, but you used to go on... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's not saying much, is it? Because <laughs> um, Roy, he, he, he comes on the first P in Playboy Channel. <laughs> little guy the soldier, little guy the soldier, little guy the soldier. I they must get home and see the wife. <laughs> yeah, but let's get back to the show. Little guy the soldier. <laughs> I have no idea. Here is the call cool maybe on male choir with the answer. <laughs> Obvious. Exactly How stupid of us. So the answer was his shirt tail is hanging out. That choir called cool maybe on male choir have won the National Ice Deadford four times and have gone on to represent Wales in the International Festival of Celtic Music. Last year, though, they finished third and had to qualify for Europe via the Intertoto Ice Deadford. <laughs> At one recent game, all 10,000 Clannethley fans sang that song in unison. It's the first time ever that Flem has stopped play. <laughs> Welsh Rugby is now under fire for trying to recruit large numbers of Australians and New Zealanders. They even put an ad in the Australian press reading, Was a parent or grandparent born in Wales? Embrace the dragon. They didn't get any rugby players from it, but they did find that bloke out of the Manic Street Preachers. <laughs> and at the end of that round, David's team have three points and Gary's team have four. now for our photo opportunity round one PR pick okay, per side right. to explain away Gary's team we have a Euro 2000 theme for you so what is that all about oh, that's yeah. Owen and Shearer standing either side of Matt Letizier <laughs> <laughs>
That's not my cologne mustling on one of my ads again, is it? Is this for plain crisps? <laughs> Watch out, Des! Right. <laughs> They're happy, bunch. <laughs> <laughs> Strike force, sort of thing. Is it some cliche, sort of press cliche, like flying high? Bombers, uh, fighters. Uh, oh, come plane. on! I'm going to hand it across. Uh, no, no, hang on. Green at this brewery. <laughs> Die, Bach, you <laughs> <soy. laughs> You've got to get it Top done. Top gun. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> We've seen it before. Lineker does nothing and then comes on the last second and pops one in. <laughs> Yes, the answer is quite simply that Owen and Shearer are England's top guns, hence the plane ride in an RAF fighter jet. The plane was actually a three-passenger aircraft with Andy Cole in the third seat, but Kevin Keegan paid the pilot to press the ejector button over the North Sea. <laughs> Emil Heskey was in a separate plane, but he missed the runway by 50 yards. <laughs> David's team, here's your photo. That's Venus and Serena Williams, but what explanation lies behind the photo? Is this something to do with rabid dogs? <laughs> David Algernon Gower, shame on you. Algernon. <laughs> His real middle name's no bet. What is it? Ivan. Ivan. It? Ivan. And where were you born? Uh, Tumbridge Wells. Were you? Well, in Tanganyika. I thought you were Conceived born. in Tanganyika. Man, she shot you yeah. out a long way then, didn't she? <laughs> Your umbilical cord must have been like a bungee. <laughs> Venus just got knocked out of the French Open, didn't she? So I think this is proof that the Williams sisters suck. <laughs> yeah, take They're your time, sad again. <laughs> you know, speaking as a, an amateur doctor, <laughs> that's the worst case of Gillian Taufel syndrome I've ever seen. <laughs> you do record breakers, has anybody ever done that? Well, I tell you what, I'll be the first one to film it. <laughs> <laughs> Is this proof that Hugh Grant's been up to his old tricks again? <laughs> <laughs> it was two for one day on Sunset Boulevard. <laughs> it's milk. Well done, three points. Yes, indeed. <laughs> That was part of an American campaign for the National Fluid Milk Processor Promotion Board. The Williams sisters' beaded hairstyle is currently all the rage amongst tennis players. In fact, Pete Sampras has had his back done. <laughs> <laughs> Venus Williams is a big fan of horror films and her favourite is a series based on Greg Rosetsky's world ranking. Friday the 13th, Saturday the 14th and Monday the 48th. <laughs> well, at the end of that round, David's team have six points and Gary's team have seven. It's time once again for our regulars to grasp a sporting gargantuan as we play field the sportsman Gary and Rory. You're up first. I'd like to take your positions. You have 90 seconds to work out who's between you. How do you do it, Jonathan? <laughs> Don't take me back to that dark place, Rory. <laughs> Can we have our first mystery guest, please? OK, and your time starts now. You have to be quick. <laughs> Rory! Oh, Gary, what the hell? Let's just do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's this? <laughs> Hello? Oh. <laughs> oh, what the hell? It's the last programme in the series. <laughs> Oh. What have you got? It's just what I asked for. <laughs> Is it some sort of sheep? <laughs> Rory, you've it's got this... Guy about this soldier. <laughs> oh, poor bloke, the pigeon shat in his head. <laughs> oh, that's horrible. <laughs> it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a runner, obviously a sprinter, some, a runner. What's um, Linford's mate called? Um, well, he's got a few, hasn't he? Darren no, he Campbell? He's only got, no, he's he's only got one, mate. Uh, <laughs> um, there's, there's Jamie Bolshaw. That's correct for three points. Well done. 
Okay, David and Jonathan, off you go. Yeah. <coughs> David, John, don't get no one tucks their shirt in like that anymore. I'm sorry, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but that's like some sort of pre-war thing. Why don't you just go the whole hog and like put the belt under your armpit? <laughs> Life holds on. You are sweating, though. I am. I'm so close to you, I've been sweating the last eight weeks. <laughs> I've told you the price. <laughs> OK, can we? I've paid you. Go <laughs> Gower hey. actually gets to ball. <laughs> <laughs> OK, can we have our second mystery guest, please? <laughs> and your time starts now. Hey, hold on. What's this? What's going on there? Hey, it's a big, it's a big tombola. We're doing the raffle. <laughs> hey, there's a hole under here. Is it Daniela so, Westbrook? <laughs> <laughs> Is it like a, it's a, it's a boat, isn't it? Is it a boat? Is it a Japanese U-boat commander who hasn't been told World War II's ending? Are you all right down there? Uh, Those kids, they sent on an adventure holiday and they forget about. Is this... Now, wait, we're talking, we've got to just work it out. You stop spinning around like that, it's really annoying. <laughs> I need the name. British champion, world champion, it's a canoe sort of kayaking thing. Um, the world champion Eskimo, Eskimo okay. roll type stuff. That's um, right, it was indeed the world Eskimo roll OK, at the, at the end of that round, David's team have nine points and Gary's team have ten. <laughs> we end the series by playing the name game. Now, this week, we want the teams to draw their clues. The lead goes first, which is Gary's team. Oh, thank you. Can you see Mark? I can I'll see just, it. I'll just pull them in a bit. <laughs> <laughs> and your time starts now. Uh, this is an old-fashioned drawing of this person. Kevin mm. Keegan. Kevin Keegan, excellent. <laughs> oh, oh, it smells nice. <laughs> Daniela Westbrook. <laughs> button, someone button. Yeah. Jensen button. Oh, fantastic. Good work, mate. Right, a bit more difficult. Looks like Rolf Harris, doesn't he? A little, <laughs> little bit of light, a little bit of dark, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Newcastle? Shearer? No? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm just... Uh, that's just someone getting his nose broken. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Very good. good. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's a clue for the sport. <laughs> it would be Box, a box, boxing. boxing. Yeah. Uh, here's another little clue for you. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Yeah. <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> right. Holding. A rugby rugby player. Uh, yeah. 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 Well done, yeah. you've yeah. moved yeah. down to fourteen. <laughs> so <laughs> six will win it for you. Wow. Lindford, could you pass that on to Jonathan? Just before we do this, may I take a second to digress momentarily, Nick? <laughs> because I wanted to say how proud I am of everyone on the show this week <laughs> for not 
going for the obvious and going on and on about Linford's lunchbox. Because Linford, <laughs> I know, like me, you're cursed with an extraordinary large Hampton. <laughs> Just because we are fantastically well endowed, there's no need to keep going on and on about it. We don't go on about David's withered stump. <laughs> we're not endlessly and tiring. We're not, we're not endlessly going on about Rory's tiny strawberry or the small mushroom that Gary's trying to grow in his pants, do we? <laughs> so why don't you leave those of us who happen to have the enormous sausage <laughs> alone and in peace to pleasure the ladies <laughs> as only we can. you approve, Linford. I'm speaking for all of us brothers. <laughs> brothers of the long sword. All those women didn't say you had a big prick, they said you were one. <laughs> OK. Right, there we go. The time starts now. Yeah, cricket, OK. <laughs> Uh, Hansi Cronier. Yeah, yeah, well done, there you go. Yeah, yeah. 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 Tennis player. Hey. Sampras. Um, Agassi. Yeah. 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 Agassi. Yeah. 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 John Perrett. Oh, there you go. No more writing words, Jonathan. All right, OK. All right, here we go. I've said it for a minute. <laughs> oh, she's nice. Spice. Yeah. Spice. Yeah. <laughs> right, here we go. Um. Uh, oh. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Pussycat, what's it? What? Can you not uh, get that? Tiger Woods. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay, here we go. Tennis. 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 Uh, Tim Edmund. Yeah. Oh, John. Oh, hey, Very good. All right, here we go. Okay. Colin Montgomery. What up? That the series is a tie, so we need a tiebreaker. Not playing. Right now, Gary, <laughs> I have here a book. Gary Lineker's favourite football stories. <laughs> you can have the series, Gary, if you can name just one of your own favourite football stories. It should be easy because bear in mind you chose them. There are 15 stories in here. Name one. From this book. <laughs> Is the one called uh, Rory Shag's Posh Spice? <laughs> Bad luck, Gary, the series okay. winners oh, are the David Steen! Sam Linford, Gary, Rory, and Mark. We're all off to enjoy Euro 2000 with Des Lynham on ITV. <laughs> My name's Nick Hancock. They think it's all over. It is now. They Think It's All Over returns to BBC One in the autumn. Next Thursday, a new comedy show starring John Byrne, Chambers, at 10 o'clock.